Hi there, this is Mike Campbell with BeerLooms.com. This is another edition of our Beginner Brewer Series. And today we are talking about siphoning equipment in particular. But what I'm really trying to show you is how to do the actual transfer or siphon itself. And I wanted to hold the camera here real quick to kind of show you what we're going to be working with, which is, in our case, uh, this is a pumpkin ale in our primary fermenter. Now, I typically start in glass, but you don't have to. And what you can see on the bottom here, you can kind of point to it right down there, is that's all uh, sediment from the pumpkin. So normally your beer would not have this much sediment, but in this particular case we do. You can also see a little bit up here as well. Uh, this is just some hop residue uh, that is stuck to the side. That's real common when you work with glass. And not unusual if you have a plastic primary fermenter as well or plastic bucket. Now down below here, we have our glass carboy. This is what we're transferring into. And what you see is a tube running all the way down there. So what we have here, this is what's called an auto siphon. And this is going to make doing the transfer nice and easy. And then this is siphon tubing that runs all the way down to the bottom of my carboy. It's important to have that tube run all the way down to the bottom of the carboy because we do not want the beer to get too much oxidation or come in contact with too much oxygen. Otherwise, we start to oxidize the beer very quickly. This is definitely what we do not want to do. So I'm not going to show you a whole lot. I will show you how to get the siphon started with using the auto siphon. And then we'll let it flow for a little bit, give you a couple more tips. And that's all we're going to kind of do. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to set this down. Sorry, I'm sure that wasn't the most interesting thing on the planet. And we're going to set our shot up here, which is pretty good. And I'm going to come over here. So again, we have our all safe. And now all this is sanitized. It's very important. Make sure you have sanitized before you do any of this. And I've already done that. And what I normally do is what you see here. I put my auto siphon in. As far down as it will go, that gives me a reference point. I know where the bottom of the carboy is because I can't see really the bottom of the auto siphon at all in this particular beer. This is also a darker uh, ale version. This is almost the color of a porter. So uh, by knowing where the bottom is and kind of judging a little bit where the sediment is, I'm going to pull up on the auto siphon a little bit so I don't suck any of this up. The idea is to leave as much sediment behind as possible. This way, when the beer goes into here, it's going to clear more, and you're going to get a clear, uh, better tasting beer. So now I know where my uh, bottom of my auto siphon is. Real simple. You don't want to pull on the uh, curved part of the, what would be a racking cane here because those break pretty easily. So you do want to lift it up a little bit. Don't put a whole lot of pressure on it, and really start the siphon a little bit further down. And to start the siphon, real simple, just basically pump a couple times and that starts your siphon. So that's pretty much the uh, process of how to start the siphon, how to transfer your beer. Obviously we're using gravity here. Uh, that's very important uh, in our particular case because you don't have pumps and things like that. We're just simply using gravity. So on the countertop and then our uh, empty fermenter is just on the floor. So nice and easy. Uh, for those wondering, what you're seeing here, this little red thing, is a carboy handle. Very handy on picking carboys up and down, especially when full like this one obviously was. And um, just want to be, make you aware that if you do pick up a full carboy, you want to only go up, straight up and down with the carboy handle. You really don't want to carry it around. The next of these carboys can snap uh, with all the weight. And there's a lot of weight in these things. Um, one other thing you probably noticed when we first started, or you can tell where this ring is, we were over the five gallon mark. Now we make five gallon batches of beer typically. The reason why mine was over the five gallon mark, we've almost got uh, uh, about a half gallon of sediment down here. So I accommodated for the fact that we're going to have displacement due to the sediment. So I really have about five gallons of this pumpkin ale in total, but it looks like more just due to the, the amount of sediment or the amount of pumpkin I had left over. Now one little hint, and that'll be it for this uh, segment. But when you get to about a gallon left of the beer, a gallon or so left of the transfer, tilt your carboy or your bucket, doesn't matter whichever one you're using, 
at about, I, I'd say it's probably about a 30 degree angle or so. Now uh, you can buy what are called carboy wedges, which help uh, hold your carboy up if you want to use those instead. You do need two of them, by the way. Um, and by tilting it, you're going to get a lot more liquid out of there and a lot less sediment because we are trying to leave as much sediment behind as possible. Doesn't mean if you set some up, don't worry about it. It's not going to hurt the beer. It's going to settle right back out in the uh, next cut, uh, in the next carboy or in the secondary. Uh, I've seen people panic way too much about this whole transfer thing. Uh, don't worry about it that much. Just be aware that um, you are trying to leave as much sediment behind because that's spent yeast in most cases. This is a house that you don't really want in the beer. Uh, it could be parts of the grain uh, from the husk and uh, things that are just going to make an unpleasant flavor in your beer. So um, I'm going to stop this transfer at this point just simply by lifting it up so I can get over to the uh, camera to shut it off. But I do want to thank you for watching our simple little transfer here. Hopefully this beer will turn out and we'll let you know. Of course, uh, Beer Looms does have a wonderful blog filled with all sorts of uh, videos and information for new brewers, advanced brewers, uh, beginner, immediate, intermediate. We have plenty. And don't forget the Brew For You podcast show. It comes out every Wednesday night and we do a show on uh, beer education. We have a beer uh, beginner brewing uh, tips. We have a beer style that we get in depth on. We review two, review two beers each time. We have uh, tips and tricks and beer news and events all over the country. Uh, it's a great show. Uh, you can access all this by going to beerlooms.com. And most importantly, we do have our own line of products. And one that we're really proud of is our hop soap. It's wonderful. We make it ourselves. Everything that we have for sale, we make ourselves here at the Beer Looms. So the hop soap is wonderful. Uh, feel free to pick them up. Just go to beerlooms.com. You can hopefully see this behind me, beerlooms.com. And I appreciate you taking the time with us. We'll have a new video coming up soon. See you later. And I'm going to come into the screen here. Turn me off, turn me off.